Hello, and welcome to a brief introduction to the complex dynamics in relationships in sign language documentation. I am Lena Ho. Before I begin, I wanted to take the opportunity to acknowledge the local land. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land in which University of California, Santa Barbara stands, the Chumash people. We recognize and honor their past and present stewardship, as well as the significance of Native American people's place in the learning and research activities of this university. Now I'd like to give you the details about our panel. Please take a moment to read the slide. I hope everything was clear. Now, the big question that motivated our panel, what are the complex dynamics in relationships in sign language documentation? This is a loaded and open-ended question. One way of addressing this is to consider the history of sign language research. There's been a tendency to view deaf people and sign languages as commodities or research objects, to examine them as if they were a lab animal. I would like to share the slide first. This isn't the time or the place to elaborate on the history of sign language linguistics, so I will sum it up. Way back in the 18th century in Europe, hearing educators labored to teach deaf children to read and write and perhaps speech. Some of the educators saw sign language in use and adopted it and adapted natural sign languages as a teaching methods. This teaching method was carried over to the United States in early 19th century. Then later in the 1960s and 70s, US hearing researchers worked to authenticate the linguistic status of American Sign Language, ASL, to demonstrate that it has a distinct language with its own grammar apart from spoken language. While the process was happening, most deaf people had their roles as either data advisors or and research assistants for hearing researchers. Though there are few deaf researchers at the time, and that small group did grow some, but they are seen as the exceptions, even to this day. The view of deaf people and sign language illuminates the roots of power inequalities in sign language research and continues to be persistent. The field of sign language research growing means that sign language documentation is expanding all around the world. There are some groups of deaf and hearing people who have forged relationships, collaborations, that are more empowering for deaf people, especially for those signing communities. This panel will investigate the types of relationships those groups have in their sign language documentation projects. There are three groups of which I will discuss further. The first group has three people, 
Ali, Dan U Lung, and Breath Wat. In their videos, all will profile different sign languages and projects based on the different parts of the Caribbean and their roles as deaf and hearing researchers in the projects. The Caribbean project includes Trinidad and Tobago, Providence Islands, Bay Islands in Honduras, and Guyana. The group highlights the importance in situating their disseminations in findings locally, as well as the value to build, maintain, and nurture local networks and close relationships with different signing communities, and to have real life applications to their research. At the same time, the researchers highlight how they have to have fluid relationships for different projects because those projects have different needs. Each community needs are unique while recognizing that the group faces other challenges during the research process. A big challenge is the scarcity of resources. If one has to leave to access educational and professional opportunities for more training or mentorship or financial opportunities for external funding, they then have to leave the Caribbean. Affiliations with institutions in the United States or Europe have more resources. The, these opportunities may be valued in academia but unfortunately, they can greatly weaken the relationship with the local deaf and signing communities, which presents a conflict. Now let's take a look at the second group of participants. In the second group, this group has also three members, Morgan, Burichani, and Odiambo. They envision a future of Kenyan Sign Language documentation. That future would involve having deaf and hearing researchers and partnerships at Kenyan universities. While Kenyan Sign Language, KSL, has a robust vitality among deaf people in deaf schools and associations, and even has a national recognition as deaf people's language. Ironically, at the same time, there is no active national effort to document KSL within Kenya. Thus, this group summarizes the challenges for making that possible to document KSL in Kenya by proposing a long-term sustainable solution. They do this by using local universities as spaces for the establishment of KSL documentation and for sign linguists to forge a collaboration with the deaf community. Those local universities are best positioned to meet current and future demands for better training and education for deaf and hearing people. And more crucially, to foster local capacity building and expanding within the local community. Now let's take a look at the third group. Adams talks about documentation of Aboriginal sign languages of Australia, and he stresses how the documentation 
is not just limited to sign language linguists, but encompasses all aspects of life. For example, it includes traditions, cultures, philosophies, and those that would empower deaf indigenous peoples. The challenges of documenting Aboriginal sign languages are numerous. Currently, there are no deaf Australian sign language linguists active in Australia, as few have migrated to the UK. So there are no universities that support any sign language research, not even Auslan research. However, Adams has been working with relationships with different people who support his documentation on Aboriginal sign languages as those people see the empowerment of Indigenous people. One thing I would like to add about this panel is that because of the online nature we want to acknowledge that the conference's virtual space has made it possible for us to come together to have a conversation about the complex dynamics in relationships in sign language documentation. This space may otherwise not be available because people are located in different parts of the world. And so we want to take advantage of this unique opportunity to unpack and discuss the process of sign language documentation and foster empowering and sustainable relationship building. We want to see what this looks like. We're looking forward to seeing everyone at our panel. Thank you.